Google has just done something that nobody thought was even possible. If I asked you what the fastest GPU on Earth is, you'd probably say something like the H100 or H200, right? But what if I told you that Google's new quantum chip can perform computations not millions, not billions, but septillion times faster? Yes, you heard that right. Google has just unveiled their new quantum computing chip, Willow. And here's the part that left me absolutely speechless. Willow performed a standard benchmark computation in under five minutes that would take one of today's fastest supercomputers 10 septillion years, a number that vastly exceeds the age of the universe. I mean, holy cow, how is that even possible? I'm not a quantum scientist, but I do have a bit of an understanding of how quantum things work, and this is mind-blowing. Okay, so quantum computers are like next-level problem solvers, but they work totally differently from the computers we use every day. Here's the deal. Imagine flipping a coin. Normally, it's either heads or tails, right? But in the quantum world, the coin is kind of in this weird state where it's both heads and tails at the same time until you actually look at it. That's called superposition. And it's why quantum computers can try out a bunch of possibilities all at once, instead of one at a time like normal computers. Now, think of a magical pair of gloves. If you take one glove and your friend takes the other, the moment you look at your glove and see it's the left one, you instantly know your friend has the right one, even if they're on the other side of the planet. That's called entanglement, and in quantum computers, it lets these special bits, called quibits, work together super efficiently, no matter how far apart they are. And here's the coolest part. Solving problems with a quantum computer is like trying to find the best way through a maze. A normal computer would go through every single path, one by one, until it finds the shortest route. But a quantum computer? It's like it sends out waves through all the paths at the same time, and the wrong ones cancel each other out, leaving only the right answer. That's quantum interference. And it's why quantum computers can be ridiculously fast at solving certain problems. So yeah, they're not magic, but they're definitely not your regular laptops either. Pretty wild, right? First look at this. They shift and change with the problems they're tasked to solve. Exploring a vast array of options all at once. And like nature, quantum computing is responsive to the environments it works within. Leading us to new breakthroughs for tomorrow's most challenging problems. Introducing our latest quantum computing chip, developed to learn and evolve like the natural world around us. Willow, from Google Quantum AI. Hi, I'm Julian Kelly, Director of Hardware at Google Quantum AI. And today, on behalf of our amazing team, I'm proud to announce Willow. Willow is Google's newest and most powerful superconducting quantum computing chip and the next step in our path towards building large-scale quantum computers and exploring their applications. I have been fascinated with quantum computing since I first experimented with Qubits in 2008. And since coming to Google in 2015, it has been a dream to make our mission a reality, building quantum computers for otherwise unsolvable problems. We launched our first chip, Foxtail, in 2017, followed by Bristlecone in 2018, and Sycamore in 2019, which powered our milestone one, the first quantum computer to surpass the best classical supercomputer on a computational task, random circuit sampling. Over the years with Sycamore, we have been able to squeeze a remarkable amount of performance from our hardware, including achieving a scalable logical qubit in our milestone two. But we've ultimately been limited by quantum coherence times the length of time qubits maintain their intended state. With Willow, we've made a huge step forward. We've increased quantum coherence times by a factor of five, going from 20 microseconds in Sycamore to 100 microseconds in Willow. And we've accomplished this all without sacrificing any of the features that made our systems so successful. Okay, so let me break down what is quantum coherence time. In quantum mechanics, Particles can exist in special states like superposition or entanglement. However, these states are very fragile and can easily be disturbed by their surroundings like heat, vibrations, or even tiny electromagnetic fluctuations. This disturbance is called decoherence, and it causes the quantum system to lose its quantumness. The coherence time is how long the system can stay in that quantum state before decoherence kicks in. It's like the amount of time you can keep a spinning top perfectly balanced before it starts wobbling and falls over. This advancement was enabled by our new, dedicated, superconducting quantum chip fabrication facility in Santa Barbara, one of only a few in the world. And we're seeing exciting developments coming from Willow, which has already surpassed Sycamore's breakthrough demonstrations. 
Our logical qubits now operate below the critical quantum error correction threshold. A long sought after goal for the quantum computing field since the theory was discovered in the 90s. And we've achieved it for the first time with Willow. Let me explain you what is quantum error rate. So quantum error correction is basically a way to fix mistakes in quantum computers. The thing is, qubits those tiny building blocks of quantum computers are super sensitive. Even the smallest disturbance, like a little heat or stray energy, can mess them up. And because of the way quantum mechanics works, you can't just copy qubits to back them up like you do with regular data in classical computers. Instead, quantum error correction does something really clever. It spreads the information across a group of qubits instead of relying on just one. So if one qubit gets messed up, the others can help figure out what went wrong and fix it. But here's the tricky part. You can't just look at the qubits directly to check for errors because observing them would destroy their quantum state. Instead, quantum computers use special circuits that can detect problems without breaking the qubits. Once they spot an error, they can use the other qubits in the group to correct it and get back on track. Errors are exponentially suppressed in our logical qubits as error rates are halved each time we add physical qubits and scale from distance three to five to seven surface codes. Additionally, our logical qubit lifetimes are now much longer than all of the lifetimes of the physical qubits that compose them. This means that even as we make our quantum chips larger and more complex by adding more qubits, we can use quantum error correction to actually improve their accuracy. We've pitted Willow against one of the world's most powerful supercomputers with the random circuit sampling benchmark. The results are pretty surprising. By our best estimates, a calculation that takes Willow under five minutes would take the fastest supercomputer 10 to the 25 years. That's a one with 25 zeros following it, or a time scale way longer than the age of the universe. This result highlights the exponentially growing gap between classical and quantum computation for certain applications. Let's talk about the hardware approach we've pioneered at Google Quantum AI that makes these things possible. Our tunable qubits and couplers enable super fast gates and operations to achieve low error rates, reconfigurability to optimize hardware in situ and run multiple applications, and high connectivity to efficiently express algorithms. We leverage this tunability to enable reproducible high performance across the device. Let me explain. A challenge in superconducting qubits is that not all of them are created equal. Some are outliers with uncharacteristically high errors. But here's where our tunable qubits really shine. We're able to fix these outlier qubits by reconfiguring them to perform in line with the rest of the device. And we can go one step further by having our researchers use tunability to continuously develop new calibration strategies that push errors down across all qubits with software. Let's quantify this and nerd out for a minute on quantum computer tech specs. We have number of qubits. Connectivity is the average number of interactions each qubit can perform with its neighbors. We quantify error probabilities for running simultaneous operations. Single qubit gates, two qubit gates, and measurement. Coherence time measures how long each qubit can retain its information. Measurement rate is how many computations we can run per second. And application performance is a full system benchmark. Willow hits a sweet spot across the full list. It has a large number of qubits with high connectivity and can run diverse applications. We measure low mean error rates across all operations, with multiple native two qubit gates. We have greatly increased T1 times. We have very high measurement rates. And Willow is below the error correction threshold and performs random circuit sampling far beyond what is possible with classical computers. Looking to the future with Willow, we continue our journey towards building large scale and useful error corrected quantum computers that will push the boundaries of science and the exploration of nature with future commercially useful applications in areas like pharmaceuticals, batteries, and fusion power, we are excited to solve the otherwise unsolvable problems of tomorrow. Okay, now you're probably thinking, is my crypto wallet safe? And the answer is yes. No doubt Google's Willow is a huge breakthrough, but it's still not enough to break your wallet. Let me explain why. 
Most cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin or Ethereum use cryptographic algorithms such as RSA or elliptic curve cryptography to secure your wallet and transactions. These rely on the fact that it's extremely hard for classical computers to factor large numbers or solve discrete logarithm problems, which would be required to break these algorithms. A fully functional quantum computer with thousands or millions of error-corrected qubits could theoretically run Shor's algorithm, which is designed to break these cryptographic protections. That's the big concern. Google's new 100 qubit quantum chip is impressive, but it's still in the noisy intermediate scale quantum era. This means it's prone to errors and doesn't have the capability to perform the large scale computations needed to break cryptographic algorithms. To run Shor's algorithm effectively, you'd need millions of stable error corrected qubits, which is still years or even decades away. So your crypto wallet is safe for now. Google's 100 qubit chip is a huge milestone but it's not even close to the power needed to break modern cryptographic systems. By the time quantum computers reach that level, the cryptography world will likely have already adapted. Once quantum computers get powerful enough, they could crack those systems. That's why researchers are already working on new types of encryption, called post-quantum cryptography, which will be tough to break, even with a quantum computer. Then, there's optimization. Quantum computers can solve problems that are way too complex for normal computers. For example, finding the best delivery routes for trucks, figuring out stock market strategies, or even optimizing how factories work. Basically, anything that involves huge amounts of data and complex decisions could get a major speed boost. Healthcare is another big one. Quantum computers can simulate how molecules interact at a super detailed level, which means they could help scientists discover new drugs way faster. Could even lead to personalized medicine, where treatments are tailored to your genetic makeup. And when it comes to AI and machine learning, quantum computers could make AI smarter and faster. They could process massive data sets, and find patterns that regular computers just can't, leading to better predictions and decisions. There's also climate modeling. With quantum computing, we could get better weather forecasts and more accurate predictions about climate change, which could help us come up with better solutions to save the planet. Lastly, new materials and energy solutions. Quantum computers could help us discover new materials for things like more efficient solar panels or batteries, and they could also find better ways to store and use energy, making our world more sustainable. So in short, quantum computing could help us tackle some of the world's biggest challenges, from securing our data, to finding cures for diseases, to saving the environment. It's still a work in progress, but when it's fully up and running, it could totally change how we do everything. Thanks for watching, guys. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to like and subscribe.